Hello, I'm Martin Park. You can call me coach. For those that don't know me, I'm a naturopath and a master coach and trainer who has been working professionally in health, fitness, wellness and personal development for over 45 years. If you are someone who is interested in learning how to maximize your overall health, well-being and performance, then welcome. Over the next few episodes, I will be exploring common micronutrient deficiencies, the issues they can lead to, and practical steps you can take to prevent them. Today, I'm going to talk about salt, friend or enemy. Sodium and chloride are essential minerals that play critical roles in various physiological processes in the body. Together, they form sodium chloride, commonly known as table salt. Sodium is involved in regulating blood pressure, fluid balance and muscle contractions. It helps transmit nerve impulses and is essential for proper cellular function. The recommended daily intake for sodium is about 2,300 milligrams for most adults, with a lower intake of around 1,500 milligrams advised for those with certain health conditions such as hypertension. Chloride works closely with sodium to maintain osmotic pressure and fluid balance in the body. The adequate intake for chloride is also around 2,300 milligrams per day for adults, similar to sodium. Both minerals are vital for maintaining electrolyte balance, which is essential for hydration, nerve signaling and muscle function. Adequate sodium and chloride levels are also important for cardiovascular health as they help regulate blood volume and blood pressure. Furthermore, a balanced intake of these minerals supports kidney function, allowing the body to efficiently excrete excess sodium while maintaining necessary levels. Put simply, sodium and chloride salt are foundational to overall health, influencing fluid balance, nerve function and digestion and maintaining appropriate levels is essential for physical well-being and optimal body function. Symptoms of sodium and chloride deficiency can include muscle cramps, fatigue, nausea and vomiting, headaches, confusion or disorientation, seizures, low blood pressure, swelling and fluid retention edema, dehydration, weakness, loss of appetite, digestive issues such as nausea and vomiting, respiratory problems due to imbalances in acid base levels, and increased thirst. Symptoms of excess sodium and chloride can include high blood pressure, swelling, edema, thirst, headaches, nausea, shortness of breath, fatigue, confusion, dehydration, vomiting, increased thirst, and weakness. So when you look at the list of symptoms regarding getting too much or too little of these minerals, you can see that they are strikingly similar. However, a notable difference arises with sodium as low sodium levels can lead to low blood pressure, hypotension, while excess sodium is associated with high blood pressure, hypertension. This issue of high blood pressure is particularly critical as it is one of the most dangerous and widespread health problems related to sodium balance, increasing the risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke and other serious health complications, further reinforcing the importance of maintaining proper sodium levels for overall health and well-being. Also, in my experience, there is a paradox with salt that is quite unique in the world of nutrition and health, and that is, while some of us will need to cut back, others might need a little bit more. Whenever I analyse the dietary components of the average person's diet, particularly one that relies heavily on processed, packaged and takeaway restaurant foods, along with the addition of salt and salt-containing condiments, sauces and flavourings to most meals, it's clear that they are consuming excess salt, and in many cases far in excess of their actual needs. In contrast, when I analyse the dietary components of someone following a whole food balanced diet, avoiding sauces, processed foods and anything with added salt, while also refraining from adding salt to meals, they often experience deficiencies in sodium and chloride. This is especially true if they consume limited amounts of food in an effort to maintain a lean body weight. My recommendations? For individuals consuming excess salt, I would recommend the following. 1. Greatly reduce processed foods, restaurant foods and takeaway foods, as they often contain high levels of sodium. 2. Check food labels for sodium content and choose low sodium or no salt added options when available. 3. Cook at home and prepare your own meals focusing on fresh, whole ingredients and flavouring meals with herbs and spices instead of salt. 
And four, while you are establishing your new habits, carefully monitor your intake via an app or food diary or with the assistance of an expert until you have got it under control. For those on a clean and whole food balanced diet who may be deficient in sodium and chloride, I would suggest 1. Include natural sources of sodium and chloride as much as possible in your diet. 2. Carefully monitor your intake via an app or food diary or with the assistance of an expert until you've got it under control. And 3. If needed, consider adding a small amount of salt to meals to help maintain proper sodium and chloride levels. Simple recommendations that can easily be incorporated into anyone's lifestyle. So is salt the enemy or a friend? Well, as you can see, if you get the right balance of sodium and chloride in your diet, then salt is definitely a friend. But if you get it wrong either way, too much or too little, it becomes the enemy. That is why it is well worth the effort to get it right. If you need my assistance with any of this, then please visit my website and support community. It is a community built on the foundation of support, accountability and empowerment with all the tools you will need to rethink, reboot and reclaim your health and well-being. I will leave a link in the description. I thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate your company. I look forward to spending some time with you again. Bye for now.